Hey guys, it's Drummond, and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you know whenever I post my next video. So today's video is going to be talking about optimism and pessimism because I feel like those things are kind of important when it comes to your day-to-day -day life. So something that I've dealt with recently is someone telling me that I'm a very optimistic person and they are a very realistic person, as if optimism and realism can't be the same thing. So I'm the type of person that I try to see the positive in everything. Granted, life gets hard. I understand that life is not perfect. If we didn't have bad moments, we wouldn't really be able to appreciate the good moments. But I'm the type of person that even in really negative moments, I try to find the positive because that's how I get through my day. I've had people tell me that you can't be optimistic every single day of your life. And I feel like that's not true. Granted, there are times where I get slapped in the face with life and it gets really hard and sometimes it's hard for me to be optimistic. But I try to surround myself with optimistic people because I think that's really important. When it comes to optimism and pessimism, pessimistic people are very negative. They think the worst in everything. They see the dark side. They see the glass half empty where I see the glass half full. So when it comes to realism, people can be optimistic and have a realistic view of life as well. I'm the type of person that I'm very optimistic, but I realize that bad things happen. And I realize that on a regular basis, I have to constantly be pushing my optimism so that I can stay on top of things. There are some people out there that feel like you have to look at all the negatives and look at all the bad things that could happen. And they just focus so hard on all the bad things. And I feel like that's not a great way to live because I believe whatever you focus on is what you bring into your life. So if you're constantly focusing on everything that could go wrong, you're going to bring in things that could go wrong. When it comes to problem solving, if you're constantly looking for a solution, then eventually you're going to find a solution. But when it comes to problem solving and you're constantly trying to find things that could go wrong, you're going to find the things that go wrong. So something that someone recently brought up to me was the fact that the way I look brings certain things into my life. And yes, I am aware that in this world, looks do matter, looks do bring certain things, but also, on the other hand, looks can also bring negative things. There are people out there who look at my life and go, oh, he's got it so easy just because of the way he looks. And they will try to do things to upset that balance. They will try to do things that will mess my life up. So that's something negative that happens. But for me, I try to be as optimistic as possible. So when I go out to different places, like a gas station where I'm just buying a soda, I will talk to the cashier and be like, hey, how's your day? How are you doing? And I'm gonna be extremely nice because I know that in those situations, those people deal with a lot of people. And yes, it might have a little bit to do with the fact that I am found to be attractive by some people, that some people get really excited and happy when I am nice to them. But on the same note, if someone's going around being miserable and grumpy and rude to people, people aren't going to like that person. So I try to be optimistic. When it comes to dating, there are just as many negatives out there for looking a certain way like I do as someone else. I had one of my clients that I was talking to tell me that if they looked like me, their life would be perfect. And I will tell you right now, my life is not perfect. So looks don't always bring a perfect life. It might appear that way because we will post pictures of us smiling and having a good time, but we deal with just as many internal problems as the rest of you guys do. And for someone to kind of look at our lives and just wish that they had it, that's why I make my YouTube videos. That's why I want to share with you guys the hard times that I go through. I had someone tell me on one of my other videos that they felt like my channel is too whiny. And I'm just like, I post videos talking about things that I've gone through and hard times that I've come across because I want people to realize that my life isn't just handed to me. I go through rotten times as well. And when I'm smiling and happy, it's something that I work on every single day. It's something that I try to bring into the world because I don't think that pessimism should be here. I don't think it's important to have that. Why should I constantly be looking for something wrong in the world when there's enough things going wrong already? So I'm the type of person that even when someone tells me, hey, if I looked like you, my life would be perfect. I like to point out, there are tons of people that don't look like me that have better lives than me. Somebody told me that I looked more like Zac Efron and they looked like Seth Rogen. And I was just like, okay, first off, 
Nowhere close to Zac Efron's status. Thank you for the compliment, but no, nowhere close. Seth Rogen, he is an extremely happy person. He's doing really well for himself and he doesn't look like Zac Efron. So when it comes to looks, I really feel like it has to do with the way you perceive looks in your head. So if you're the type of person that goes around saying, oh, I can't have all the things that this person has because I look like this, that's a pessimistic view and you're not going to get anything that they have because you're constantly saying you're not gonna get it. So of course you're not going to get it because you're not trying to get it because you're saying that you already can't because of the way that you look. One story I kind of told to kind of give an example of this is when it comes to the things that you focus on, those are the things that come into your life. So I was car shopping and I'm the type of person that I don't really know that much about cars. And to be honest, before I started car shopping, I really couldn't tell you the difference between most cars. I could tell you the color and that it was a car or an SUV or a truck or a van, but that's about it. I couldn't tell you any of the make and models other than that. So when I started shopping for a car after I totaled my car last year, I started to kind of notice there was some cars that I really liked the style of. When it came to like the RAV4 um, that Toyota made, I really liked that car. And I'd never really seen it before. But after I started doing my research, I started to see them everywhere. And then when I actually ended up buying my Ford Escape, I started seeing them everywhere. It was like everyone had the Ford Escape. And I was just like, oh man, I thought mine was gonna be special, but it really wasn't. And I was telling that story just because when it comes to what you focus on, that's what you start to see. So because I started focusing on new cars and I started focusing on like the RAV4 and the Ford Escape, I started to see them everywhere. It wasn't the fact that those didn't exist until I started looking. It was just my brain wasn't focusing on them. So when they drove by me on the road, I didn't notice anything special about them. They were just a car driving past me. But because I started noticing the Ford Escapes because I was interested in buying one, because I started looking at the Toyota RAV4s, I started seeing them everywhere. And that's because your brain can really only process a little bit at a time. So there's this awesome show on Netflix called The Brain Games, and I definitely recommend people watching it just because it shows you how many things that your brain actually just doesn't notice because there's so many things that you can see and hear and smell, and it goes through your brain and only a few things actually come through. So when it comes to what you focus on, if you're constantly focusing on the negative, then you don't leave a lot of room for positive things to come into your life. But if you're constantly focusing on positive, you open up your mind to bring in a lot more positive. Granted, bad things will happen, but if you're constantly focused on the positives, you're going to see a lot more positive in the situations. One person tried to challenge me with this by saying, okay, well, what if my significant other died? And I was like, yeah, that's an extremely horrible moment in time. Nobody wants their significant other to pass away. But one thing that you can do is focus on the good things that you had with them while they were here on earth. You can focus on the things that they taught you. You can focus on the memories that they created for you that can now project you into your future. There are so many things that you can focus on that aren't negative in that situation. And yes, it's hard. Yes, you're going to cry because your significant other passed away. Anytime you lose someone, you're going to be upset. But when it comes to what you focus on, you really have to focus on the positive. When it comes to being single, there are a thousand things about being single that's amazing. But there's also just as many negative things about being single, just like when it comes to being in a relationship. There's tons of things that are great about being in a relationship, but there's also negative things about being in a relationship. It really just depends on where you put your focus. So if you're constantly focused on why it's so negative to be dating this person instead of why it's so positive, of course things are gonna start going downhill because you're constantly looking for things going wrong. There have been people that I've dated where I'm constantly optimistic. I'm constantly looking over their flaws, constantly trying to find the good in them. And they were the complete opposite. They were constantly trying to find my flaws. I've had people tell me, they're like, oh, you're so perfect. I just, I feel like there's things that you're trying to hide. And I'm like, it's not the fact that I'm trying to hide anything. It's the fact that I'm just a happy person. So when it comes to negatives, it's a little harder to find them in me because I'm always optimistic. Granted, if you've dated me, you know that there's times where life just slaps me in the face and I'm just like, oh, I don't wanna get out of bed today. I get that way sometimes, all of us do, but being optimistic is something that you have to push for so that you can bring in more optimism into your life. Because I promise you, I have flaws, I have lots of them. I try to share some of them with you guys on YouTube, 
There's other things that I kind of keep to myself because it's things that I'm working on on myself. When it comes to dating, I have insecurities, but those are things that I'm constantly working on. I look at those types of things and I'm like, how can I fix this? And instead of sitting there looking at it in a very pessimistic way saying, oh, well, no one's gonna wanna date me because of this, I'm going, oh, so this is something that people don't really like about me. How do I fix it? Because I'm an optimistic person, so I'm trying to fix things. But that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I love hearing from you guys. And if you haven't already, make sure you go follow me on my other social medias. I have Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. I have all of them. So just go check me out. Um, I post on most of them regularly and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.